guys. I hate taking up a lot of time with announcements. So just really quick, I want to hit it. Uh, outdoor service on June 7th and 14th. We back. Uh, Sundays, let's go. Be there. Uh, I know if you don't go to CCC, your churches are probably starting up too. I was just talking to Pastor Jeremy over at CA yesterday. I know they're starting up this Sunday. So talk to your churches, figure out, uh, talk to your parents. Sunday services are coming back slowly, but surely and soon enough we'll be back as well. That is the next thing I want to share is June schedule dropped on Sunday. We're going to post it right after this message on Wednesday night or Thursday morning sometime here soon. Uh, we have a, so many fun things happening in June. One of those first things that's happening is that 90 day devotional, uh, Good News Daily, going through the gospel in 90 days, one chapter at a time. We got about 17 people or something like that in our uh, Uversion Bible study group. That's a plan, what they call it. Uh, it's by the Bible Project. So go ahead and join that. You can find all this stuff at ccchurch.org slash you. And I just want to give a message to my seniors specifically. I want to say um, this scripture really stood out as a scripture that just epitomized who you guys are. The past couple months have been so hard. Your senior years were ripped away from you. Your senior proms, your sports seasons, all these memories, all these expectations. Um, and James 1 verse 2 through 4 really stood out to me. I'm going to read it to you. And the header is testing of your faith. And wow, isn't this just been an unbelievable test of your faith as seniors? You could have never expected this to happen. But it says, James, James writes, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The coolest thing about this, it's such a difficult, it's a simple, but it's a difficult scripture. But so many of you have responded to trials of various kinds in your life, but ultimately these past couple months, this pandemic, and I've seen so many of you lean into what God is doing in this time in your life and the people around you's lives and what's ahead. And guys, I'm just so proud of you. We're so proud of you. We're going to miss you as a youth group, but more than we're going to miss you, because you're always welcome back. You can always come back and visit. But we're so excited for what God's going to do because this is a group, the class of 2020 is a group that is going to change the world like no other class before because you have, you have faced trials that are different than anyone in this world has ever tried before. So we're so excited for you. Uh, we're going to hear from some of our seniors right now, but we just want to say as a youth group, as a church, we love you so much. You're always welcome back. Stay, stick around for the summer, and we're so excited for what God has for you guys in this next stage of life. So I'm going to give it over to you guys. I want to hear some wisdom from our seniors. Take it away. Hey, guys. So um, I'm going to be talking about something that I've learned from youth that I just want to, like, make clear for the people that um, are still going or, like, haven't com come yet just the biggest thing is don't take it for granted because like in high school there's like a lot of time where you're studying and a lot of things that you just have to do and people will be like oh we have next week to go to youth and stuff like that and i mean like i've d i i have done that plenty of times but i think the biggest thing that i want to point out is just like take advantage of the time that you have to go to youth and just the things that you get to do with your youth group because like the friends that you make in church are friends that you will have for forever because like they have the same like morals and beliefs and i'm not saying everyone that goes to our youth group has the same morals and beliefs but most of the friends that you're making there have the same intentions and in, as you in life so just take advantage of the the youth groups that are available to you before you're too old to um go because they like just even every night um at youth like on wednesday nights any of the messages that joe preaches or sway or anybody that preaches they always will stick with you no matter like no matter what it is if it's worship if it's the message if it's small groups whatever it is you'll get something out of that night so just don't take it for granted hey everybody um for those of you who don't know me my name is bryce lawrence um i'm planning on attending naya college in the fall if all things go well, um, it is in New York City, so kind of in the middle of things. 
Um, I miss everybody. Uh, I wish I could be at youth group and hanging out with you guys. Um, this quarantine has taught me a lot of things. Um, God has been working um, through it and been teaching me things throughout. Um, you know, and, and things have kind of been reoccurring in my life. Themes have been showing up uh, more prevalent now. Um, and Joe asked me to just share a few, you know, little words of wisdom, I guess. So, um, one of the things that God has really been showing me um, throughout my life is just that people are more important. Um, you're not capable of doing life alone. Um, at least I'm not. Um, I've been in a pretty hard place um, during quarantine, and God's used people to help me get out of that dark place. Um, I'm still struggling, and I still need God to help me through um, that struggle. But God has been using people and has been using my relationships with people to help lift me up. Um, and I think that that's one of the main ways that He works. Um, and yeah, you can have a fantastic relationship with God and not even need you know, people. Um, but I think that as a Christian, that's one of our main priorities is to be in relationship with people to be proximate with people and have to have a um, relationship with me. So, see you guys. Like I said, I miss everybody. Um, hope to see you soon. Hope I'll get to see you guys before college at some point. Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm part of the class of 2020. So as of last week, I graduated high school. Um, something that is really important that I have learned over the last year of my life and basically over the whole course of my life is trusting in the Lord because ever since I was young my family and myself have faced big challenges and throughout all of it God has been faithful and God has just really shown himself and especially in the last over quarantine for us we've gone through like weird stuff during quarantine I'm not gonna go into that but um yeah God has really been evident in our lives and we have all really trusted in him and something that I think needs to be like known to like high schoolers is trusting in the Lord will get you further than trusting in your peers and trusting in like yourself honestly like because when we put our trust in man man is meant to fail God has never failed, God will never fail, and it's just really important for us um, as teenagers to really know the posture of our heart and make God the priority of our lives, because we never know what's going to happen, we don't, we're not promised anything, so like putting all your trust in God and um, just really digging for a deeper relationship with God is like the best thing you possibly do and a bible verse I do want to say is Proverbs 3 5 through 6 which is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so for the upcoming seniors and just people who are going to be in high school or or are in high school um finding a college and picking a major is really hard but like like what I said, trust in the Lord, and pray about it, put a lot of hard um, work into your schooling, and do what you want to do, you know, I, I trust in the Lord, obviously, okay, that's, <laughs> do what you want to do, but also make sure it's what God really wants for you, and also, something that's important, is if you are going to be, if you are someone you know, is going to be 18 by November 3rd, Make sure you are registered to vote and make sure you vote on November 3rd because that is very important and it is your duty as a citizen. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey guys, I'm going to put up a pic of t Rebs, but he sent me a letter to read actually, so I'm going to read it. It says right from the mouth of Trevor Fox, the t Rebs. He says, everybody, it's me, Trevor. It's been a while since I've been able to see any of you and I wish everything could just go back to normal soon because I really miss you guys 
kind of shy though, and I don't exactly love seeing my face in photos and videos, so I wrote this letter instead of making a video. I've got some stuff that I want to tell you that I really wish I could have known uh, before myself, and uh, I hope that it'll help you in any way possible. I now commence my rant of wisdom. First of all, if you haven't already, get a driver's license and a good paying job with people who treat you well and who are uh, comfortable working with you whenever you can do that. I personally didn't get a job at Donato's until I was like 16, which isn't too bad, but I still haven't got my license at 19, and it's kind of making me miserable because I can't go anywhere on my own and enjoy my own freedom. Don't waste your time doing anything that you wish you could have used that time doing uh, for something else. Use it wisely. Plan for the future and learn from the past. Don't stay or live in either the past or the future for too long because you only stress yourself out and that's obviously not the time in which you are actually living your life. In other words, live and enjoy your life in the present. Learn from your past mistakes and struggles and plan for and look forward to the future. Anything you do that actually you enjoy uh, doing from just deep down in your heart, as cliche as that may sound, is all that matters and don't let anybody tell you otherwise that it may be a waste of your time. Obviously, we should get to use our time wisely and do what we know we should be doing, whatever that may mean for you. But if you aren't able to accomplish that, then don't beat yourself up over it. You still have more time. You're only human. You can only do the best that you yourself can actually accomplish. If you're not able to meet someone's expectations, even while doing your best, then it's fine. You've done your best. Um, someone expecting more out of you and ridiculing you for your every expectation or imperfection is not helping you, period. Positively criticizing you to help you grow is good, but negative criticism will only make you wilt if you choose to internalize what is said to you. Not everything is for everyone. If you don't exactly like an activity or extracurricular that everyone else seems to like, then there isn't anything wrong with you. That just means that you're unique, um, just like everyone else. Your friends should be people who encourage you and are people that you feel comfortable around and don't make you feel judged or being yourself. High school can kind of make you feel trapped since there might be a lot of people that may have some same interests as you, which is fine since uh, they're not the only source of friends available to you. Lastly, learn to give people and yourself grace. Grace and mercy, in my opinion, are some of the most underrated virtues, and I feel like they need to be paid more attention to. Mercy is the act of withholding or refusing to give deserved or justified punishment, while grace is the act of endowing or gifting unmerited or undeserved favor or kindness. Sorry that took so long. I just hope that anything of what I said was helpful, useful, or even enlightening to someone. Thank you, t -Revs. Hello everyone. Um, I've been asked to share words of wisdom, things I knew, things I wish I learned about senior year. And if you hear any noise in the background, my room is right outside my air conditioning system. So that might be what you're hearing. And if you are, I'm so sorry. But without further ado, let's continue. Um, so, you know, with everyone's pretty aware, I think, about, you know, COVID, you know, it's pretty out there. And some, and at first I was like, you know, man, I'm very angry. I was very angry. So angry. I was angry at God. I was angry at the world. I was angry at the man that decided to eat a bat. I was angry. And I didn't know where to put it, you know? But then I realized that God gives and takes away um, without our permission. Why? Because he knows. He knows. So it's, I've been having to gain, like to put a lot of trust. Trust is something that's very, very hard for me. And I've been having to put a lot of it in the Lord because he knows what he's doing. He has a plan. There's a reason why he canceled all the fun parts of being a senior for me. And I'm still trying to figure out why that is. Um, but learn to trust, but I realize it's like you have to learn to trust the Lord. Even if you don't know what's going on, you don't know why life is happening the way it's happening, if you don't trust God, then it won't go well. The Lord knows exactly what he's doing. He's in your tomorrow. He's in the day that your hard time ends. So literally, if all, all you gotta do is just say, Lord, I trust you. And just like give everything to him. And life will become so much easier. I have gained all my happiness back. I'm, I'm cruising. I'm enjoying quarantine, sort of. So, that's all I have. Everyone be safe. Love y'all. Hey, guys. We're in our last week 
of Heaven and Earth. Uh, this series has been awesome. I have had, we've had the greatest uh, small group discussions that I've ever had as a youth pastor. So I want to just commend you. Thank you guys um, for showing up and just being so active. If you haven't joined one of our groups afterwards, I'm just going to shameless plug right now, ccchurch.org slash youth. You can find the guys and girls links. As soon as this video is over, um, you know, probably about 7, 7.15, something like that. Whenever the video is over, it premieres at 6.30. We'll be jumping into those. Just click the link and you'll be able to pop right into the video chat. If you're like, I don't want to be on a video chat, uh, don't show your video. Mute yourself. Uh, you know, we just would love for you to be part. Uh, so definitely join us if you have it. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but last week, we're doing Q&A on questions about heaven and earth and all things surrounding that. So let's just get into it. Question one is such a good one such a deep one we're not going to waste any time here i'm going to throw it up on the screen so you can see it how could a good and loving god send people to hell that is a tough one so there are some assumptions in this question though that god sends people to hell i want to focus in on that word sends people and maybe you haven't heard this before but the truth the reality actually and, and hopefully you've caught this theme throughout what we've been talking about the past few weeks, if you've been with us, is that God actually doesn't send anyone to hell. God never intended anyone to go to hell. God does not want or desire anyone to go to hell. Why would he? If he's a good and loving God, why would he want people to go to hell? Hell is someone actually, actually someone or somewhere uh, you actually choose to go, right? God gives us uh, actually T-Revs in, uh, in his letter said, Grace and mercy are underrated virtues. Amen to that, bro. Um, grace is this thing that we continue to sin. We continue to be separated from God by our own accord. This is something we, we have to come to terms with that. We caused uh, eternal uh, <laughs> damnation, right? That hell, being se hell is being fully separated from God, right? For the rest of eternity. And a lot of us choose to be separated from God because the wages of sin are death on earth every single day because we're sinners. Now, God easily could have said, all right, I'm done with this. This is ridiculous. If he was a, like fully just, right? Justice would be, okay, well, they have done wrong. They have chosen to be without me. Death. But God gives us grace and mercy. It's something we don't deserve, right? t Rev said this, undeserved. Uh, it's an undeserved gift given upon us. But what do you have to do with a gift? You have to receive a gift. And that is Jesus. Jesus is the epitome, right? the moment where all of our sins were taken, were put on that cross, he died for our sins, he rose again. And in the same way, we'll get to this a little bit later in more detail, but we now can live resurrected lives for eternity. And eternity starts right now, right? This is just, this, is, this life is actually a period, a stage, where we have an ability to accept God's grace and then begin to live with him for all of eternity, right? That's why we have this life. Uh, Dallas Willard, I actually um, said this, I think, la in last week's message, but it's worth repeating. Uh, it's from his book called The Renovation of the Heart. Dallas Willard says, One does not miss heaven by a hair, but by constant effort to avoid and escape God. You know, I want to just go off on a, on a little side note on this question because it's a great, great question. I think this is key to understanding it and really diving to another level of understanding the answers is throughout the years, I've realized that people uh, often think and obsess more about hell than they do heaven. Why is that? Why is it we are so focused on the negative? Hmm? Well, because it's, it's a reality, right? Heaven is a reality. We see it depicted everywhere in, in some interesting ways. Maybe some are right, maybe some are wrong. But nonetheless, we know hell is going to be an awful place. We read that in the Bible. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Old Testament, New Testament. We see that hell is not a place anyone wants to be or should want to be, right? But hell is simply being separated from God and a, an eternity of sin, an eternity of separation is a brutal thing. But why do we obsess so much about heaven why, or hell? Why do we think more? I've had more discussions about hell than heaven. I think more people have more fear about hell than joy about heaven. Maybe that's you. Do you have more fear about hell than joy about heaven? And I think about this, if you close your eyes, imagine yourself standing on a cliff and this cliff falls off. I'm talking like half your foot is like off the cliff already 
and this is like a thousand foot drop off. This is like, you know, you're at uh, Half Dome, you know, Yosemite. Uh, it's one of the, like, you're, you're going to die if you fall off this cliff. And the reality is you're going to die if you fall off this cliff. And you're looking and it's, it's so terrifying and it almost feels like in some ways you can't look away. And I think sometimes the reality of hell is that way. But the reality is when we just simply turn away, right? In the, in the metaphor, we just turn away and, and there's a flat surface. There's actually a huge lush forest right behind us when we turn around. But we continue to look off the cliff. We continue to live in fear instead of enjoying and embracing the gift that is behind us. And the gift that, and that's, that is exactly the story of the cross, of repentance that actually means to reorient, to turn, is we need to turn from sin and death and hell toward God. And that is when you begin to live a life full of joy, full of peace, full, full of love. You begin to see God. You begin to live a heavenly life here on earth. Uh, so here, here's a key point though, because this whole story of redemption, it could have looked different, right? So instead of oblivion, right, being completely eliminated, uh, just done, right, Elphine, the end, God in his goodness, he chose to love us and give us an opportunity to live with him eternally. Get this, guys. If fully justice was served, if grace and mercy were not given to us all throughout time, but mainly through the cross, we, we see that is the point in history where we really can look to then it's just oblivion. Then God would have just eliminated us, literally taken us from, maybe he would have let us live our lives and we would have died and that would have been it, right? Um, but catch that last word I said, eternally. God lets us live eternally. It's a redemption that's eternally. And that means forever. And life as we know it, right? From when you're born to the day you die, God has always wanted to be with us. That's what holiness is, to be with God. Sin is to be apart from God. It's not God's plan. God does not want to send you to hell. God does not want to send your best friend, your grandfather, your enemy, sorry, even the people you hate. God does not want to see them in hell. God has created each of you in his image to live in perfect union, to live eternal lives with him, not without. So God does not send people to hell. In fact, he's wanting to send everyone to heaven. What's the difference? An acceptance of grace, an acceptance of the gift of God and the cross of pursuing Jesus daily. That's a daily gift, right, that we pick up in the form of a cross. Second question. Yeah, that's a good one. How do I know if I or someone else is going to heaven? Whew, okay, so how do I know if I or someone else is going to heaven? So that's kind of a two-parter. Um, first part is how do I know if I'm going to heaven, right? So great question. Uh, everyone asks themselves this question. So this is so good. I'm glad someone submitted this. Um, at some point or another, we all ask this. It's clearly important. The Bible actually tells us in, uh, about Jesus in John 1, verse 9 through 3. It's one of the most beautiful. John 1 is just one of the most beautiful scriptures in the Bible. If you haven't, if you don't know it, just go read it tonight. Uh, go look it up right now. You, if you want to ignore me to go read your Bible, I will accept that 100 times out of 100. Um, but John 1, verse 9 through 13, it says this about Jesus. It says, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, catch this, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, right? There's an eternal aspect here. So some questions to ask yourself to really uh, evaluate if you are truly, or someone else is going to heaven. Um, I'm just gonna reread these really quick. Does your life reflect heaven? Do you focus, do you focus your mind on the present moment you're in with a greater perspective of eternity. Does your character reflect God's more and more each day? Love, peace, patience, joy, mercy, grace. Do they, are these things you exhibit more and more each day, right? Not that they'd be perfect. We're not looking for perfection here. That is not, that is not the level that God wants from you. Actually, he wants you to admit that you're not perfect. Because uh, as we talked about last week, our weakness, 
His strength is seen in our weakness. Do you close the door? It's the big one. Do you close the door on the sins in your life or do you freely let them in, right? We talked about what God said to Cain a few weeks ago of sin is lurking at the door. Will you let it in? Is this something you do? Because that's not not indicative. It's not a, not something that you would see in someone's life that is pursuing God. Jesus says in Matthew 6, verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart lies. We don't often see treasure laying around, so I'm going to make that a little bit modern, I guess. What you prioritize, the things you spend all your time and your money doing, or with, or on, there your heart lies. If you follow your time, your money, and your energy, you will find where your heart lies. Are these three things, are these three things, time, money, and energy, going to God? Remember, you're not perfect, but are there signs of an eternal life? Are there signs of a, cha a transformation in your life, in someone else's life? The incredible thing about this question is uh, only that <laughs> there's only you actually, only you can know if you're going to heaven. Someone can give you clarity, as I hope I'm doing, right, as you're listening to this, but I can never know if your heart is truly centered upon God. I cannot know. This is key, guys. I cannot know. You cannot know. However good your deeds, if you truly love God, if you've truly reoriented your life, and this answers the second part of the question, how do you know if someone else is going to heaven? Well, first off, asking them is a great start. <laughs> if you ask them and their answer is yes, uh, you can begin to examine their character. <coughs> Ooh. Um, and when you examine your character and you see that their character does reflect aspects of God, you've seen some transformation in their life. You see peace and love and, and generosity. They're extremely kind or generous. But you still say, okay, but how do I know? That person, you know, leaves us, passes on. How do I know that that person, how do I know that this loved one is in heaven? And the fact is, it's a tough reality, but you don't. You don't. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 asks, For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. And the biggest point here about knowing if someone else goes to heaven just, I mean, knowing full on, you can believe it, but the only one who truly knows it is that person who knows their own heart and God who knows their heart. Now we get the people we're close to and we're around, you know, we get to see a lot of that. We get to examine this, but there's no fullness uh, that we get to really understand. My childhood best friend, and, and I would consider him my brother because I'm only child, grew up with him. Charlie, he tragically died in a car accident when I was in college. Um, I struggled with the question, how do I know he's in heaven? I really struggle with that a lot, a ton. Uh, but the truth is, um, I grew up in church with Charlie and um, I know he believed Jesus to be God. You know, we had those discussions, we sat through um, those Sunday schools, we sat through those services, um, even just talking in our own lives, just, you know, hanging out uh, throughout our lives. We covered those questions and I thought back at his life and I remembered a love and a generosity for others unlike anything I've ever seen. Like me, he wasn't perfect. We all make mistakes. You're all going to be able to examine someone's life and say, ah, oh, that person wasn't like that characteristic wasn't from God. Okay, but are there characteristics from God? Does this person profess to be a Christian? Does this person actually show characteristics of godliness, of a transformation of character to look more like Jesus. And do I believe Charlie's in heaven today? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Am I 100% sure? It's simply not possible because I'm not God. Yet my answer to that question will always be a resounding yes. So that's a tough one. You can't know for sure but absolutely examine someone's character, talk to them, ask them, do they believe Jesus is a Christ? Have they accepted that gift of grace? And do you see transformation in their life? 
Next one. All right, we're getting theological on this one. What is purgatory and is it real? It's a good one. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of purgatory, but I'm just going to share the definition uh, found in the Oxford Dictionary. So in, in, in Roman Catholic doctrine, uh, it's a place or state of suffering inhabited by souls of sinners who are expiating. <laughs> if you don't know that word, I had to look it up. Uh, it means atoning or, you know, covering their sins uh, before going to heaven. It's a place or state of suffering inhabited by the souls of sinners who are atoning their sins before going to heaven. If you're a Christian, uh, there should be a little alarm ringing off because they're in the space, they're atoning for their sins. There's something they're doing uh, for the atonement of their sins. Now, as a Christian in Christian doctrine, especially Pro Protestant doctrine, we believe that Jesus died on the cross atoning for our sins. So this actually weakens the cross. You and I do not have to atone for our own sins. Um, in fact, the idea that we do would entirely trash the reality of who Jesus was and why he died on that cross and rose again. During his crucifixion, Jesus actually offered a profound answer to a dying thief. The thief said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied to him, truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Some believe in an intermediate heaven, uh, something that's kind of in between this heaven and earth. Um, but this space between heaven and earth is really actually barely spoken of in scripture. So um, it's best not to read into it a whole lot. It's really interesting to, to look into, and I'll drop some links down into the description of the YouTube video. Uh, so if you guys wanna do more reading, if you wanna do more research, uh, feel free to do that. Feel free to ask more questions on this. This is great. Um, I like, I actually, one of the resources I will link is uh, Zondervan Academics blog post. Um, they said, whatever life is ahead in the eschatological, eschatological future, uh, and that's just eternal, uh, after this life, interim and final, it can only be a life in Christ. So whatever the next stage in life is, uh, we believe it's not going to be purgatory. There is no atonement that has to happen after we die. Actually, the atonement already happened on the cross when Jesus died and rose again for our sins. So like I, we've been talking about this whole time, we accept that gift, we take it, we are atoned, um, and then there might be some sort of intermediate heaven, um, but, but whatever it looks like, it looks like fellowship with Christ. It looks like being with Christ fully. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps someone. If you've heard of purgatory, again, that is a Catholic term. It's a Catholic doctrine. So if you have a background in Catholicism uh, or grew up in the Catholic Church, you probably have uh, an idea of that. And uh, actually, that would be great if you have uh, some knowledge on that to share a little bit about that uh, in small groups. So second, uh, next question, uh, won't heaven be boring? That is such a good one. Won't heaven be boring? You would think, right? Like after uh, a million years, you'd be like, uh, like, you know, is this heaven is the spot, but on like day one billion and two, you're like, I need a change of scenery. I need like a vacation or something, right? Uh, and that's simply, uh, <laughs> it makes sense because we get bored of everything in this life, right? Um, I, I like kind of the way I put this. So I'm just going to read it right off my notes here. Um, we would think that we'd get bored because we live in a world filled with temporary uh, fleeting things. From the cars we drive to our bo own bodies and the food we put in them, everything is temporary, right? It's just a fact. Hopefully you've learned this. <laughs> Uh, the writer of Ecclesiastes, this is one of my favorite books of the Bible, so good, Old Testament, uh, in the wisdom literature, Ecclesiastes details as well, and even it calls uh, life fleeting smoke or a vapor that is here one moment and gone the next. However, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, says something so good that actually is the contrast, the other side to that. The writer says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. We cannot fathom heaven. We can't understand, we can't begin to fully understand what heaven's gonna be like because everything is temporary. Everything we know is temporary except for God. And we have a lot of trouble understanding God, don't we? So it's gonna be a constant and eternal uh, process of, of knowing what is eternal. 
what is everlasting? So we long for something eternal, not temporary. And that's actually why heaven is what it is. Um, as this earth is passing away, this new heaven and new earth will be something eternal to look forward to. So heaven is that thing. Uh, so is heaven going to be boring? Absolutely not. You would think so. That makes sense. It's a good thought, but it's a human thought, not a heavenly thought. Um, next one. Whew, good one. What will our resurrected bodies look like? God gave us human fleshly bodies for a reason, right? Uh, if you've heard the Elevation song, Resurrecting, it's one of my favorite songs. Absolutely love that worship song. Uh, it goes like the resurrected king is resurrecting me. And that lyric is actually deeply embedded in scripture. When you're saved and resurrected from uh, a life of sin and death, your new life is all encompassing. New mind, new body, new soul, all of it, all in Christ. So we talked a little bit about this earlier, but Christ's resurrection is the pattern that our resurrection will follow, right? So when we die, just as Christ died, he came and died, he rose again. Well, what did that look like? There was a resurrection of mind, body, and soul. And there were some, some things a little, quite a little bit different uh, when Jesus um, rose, but there was still this, this physical body that was restored, right? So there's going to be part of it. I think we're going to still look similar. We're not going to look totally different or what, there's no reason God would give us bodies and then give us completely different like faces. Like we're like, oh my gosh, look in the mirror. Who am I? Um, there's still this, um, you know, fleshly, this is bodily identity to us uh, that God gave us for a reason. So we're still going to see a resurrection, might look a little bit different, but there's going to be a transformation to the fullness. Uh, this quote, uh, I can't remember where I got it from. I'm so sorry. Uh, Christ's resurrection is the pattern that our resurrection will follow. Then we will also be raised with the same body. I think that was John Piper, actually. Um, so we're going to have be raised with the same body. Um, so it, it will be a fullness of this life, right? So all the disease, all the, you know, this and that, all the deformities, all the whatever, we're going to be a fullness of our uh, bodies as well. So physical, spiritual, mental, we're going to, we're going to experience a fullness of all those things, a transformation, a resurrection of everything that was affected by sin in our lives that we live right now on earth. All right, guys. Well, last question of this Q and a on heaven and earth. It's a good one. Will there be animals such as pets in heaven? Well, God actually has a special reason uh, and a place for each of his created beings. So it would make sense that animals are for sure going to be in heaven, right? Uh, animals too, actually, were actually given a purpose God given uh, in his creation, right? Man actually is the highest order of creation was given dominion, right? Over the animal kingdom. So there's actually a, a link between us as humans and animals, the animal kingdom. God created those things. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily make sense for God to create something and then us to not see it in the new heaven and new earth. So absolutely, uh, there will be animals there. Uh, as far as the pets, I'm not totally sure. Maybe, uh, you know, pets are something so near and near to our hearts. Uh, you know, I know so, so many of us, we had like uh, on small groups last week, we had like a, a rabbit, a cat, uh, a couple of dogs. Like we had, it was pet mania last week. Um, so I, I imagine I, you have to read into it. There's no perfect answer I can give you. So I'm not going to say, yes, there are going to be pets. Uh, your pets will be in heaven waiting for you. Um, but odds are, because we have such a deep connection with them, there still will be animals that we have deep connections to in the new heaven and new earth. Um, we believe that animals were intended for man's enjoyment and use. Uh, the Bible itself does not indicate, you know, if there's life after death for animals. So that's again, the pet, the pet thing, um, you know, the animals that are here on earth, not sure if it'll be other animals or if there will be a resurrection for them as well. Um, it may be that God's purpose for animals is fulfilled here on earth. I, we don't know. Uh, however, if animals, you know, would make us happier in heaven, uh, surely there would be a place from there because there is this deep spiritual connection, it seems, with animals here on earth. Uh, some Bible interpreters have called attention to Isaiah's description, actually, of the peace of God's future kingdom, where he says that the wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. That's Isaiah 65, 25. So there is this picture of um, animals being in heaven. And, and being like super weird. Can you imagine like a wolf and a lamb 
or a lion and like a you know wiener dog just chilling with each other uh so there's this picture of that heaven will lack nothing that is good and that will bring glory to god so i, I gotta believe that as part of god's creation um maybe it's fulfilled but i could definitely see uh pets and animals being part of that creation all into eternity so that's our last question for tonight man i hope as we go into small groups um you guys ask questions, ask more questions. I hope you guys got something from this Q&A. I hope it deepened your understanding, your curiosity, your wisdom uh, for God, for things of heaven and earth. I hope it helped you have more of a heavenly mindset. Uh, I cannot wait to discuss these things with you. Uh, so we got girls, we got guys, small groups, ccchurch.org slash youth. We'll see you there. Oh man, we totally forgot to pray. And I also just want to throw up the schedule for June because this is exciting stuff. We got so many awesome things happening in June. So there's the schedule. You got that. I'm going to throw it up right over here. And then let's pray and just close this out. What's been an incredible four weeks of talking about heaven and earth. And it's only going to get better for me because we're going to small groups right after this. So Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for deepening our understanding of who you are, of your creation, of what you created heaven and earth to be and god that you're constantly restoring it, jesus that your mercy and grace are seen throughout all the earth god in our lives in nature throughout the past and the future and god we look to the new heaven and the new earth and we look to the kingdom of god jesus that you came down and you died for our sins so that when we believe in you we may live eternally with you. We may, be, we may be in fellowship. We may be united with you. Jesus, we long for that day. And Jesus, we pray you draw near to us right now in this moment. And that we may just experience a, a, a bit of heaven tonight as we think on heavenly things. As we give our minds, we give our attentions, we give our spirits and our hearts to you. So Jesus, we pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit in discussions in prayer and we give it all to you jesus we pray this in your holy name amen peace be with you love you guys